Part 1. Hey everyone, strap in because I've got a story that sounds like it came straight out of a soap opera, but I swear every word of it is true. I've been lurking for years, but I never thought I'd have something worth posting until now. This is the tale of how I discovered my long-lost twin sister, who, as it turns out, has been working in the same office as me for the past five years. Yeah, you read that right. Let's dive in. I'm a 30-year-old guy working in a mid-sized tech company in a big city. I've always been the kind of person who keeps to himself, not antisocial, just introverted. I've got a decent circle of friends at work, including one coworker, Sarah, who I've always felt inexplicably drawn to. We're not just talking about having similar tastes in coffee or complaining about the same meetings. It's deeper than that. We finish each other's sentences, share a lot of the same obscure interests, and even our mannerisms are eerily similar. We chalked it up to being workplace twins, a term we jokingly coined to explain our weird connection. Little did I know how accurate that term would become. Now, let's rewind to about six months ago. Our company decided to host a family day, one of those events where employees can bring their relatives to show them where they work, meet their colleagues, etc. I've never been much of a family guy, mainly because it's always just been me and my dad. My mom passed away when I was too young to remember her, and as far as I was told, it was just us. My dad is a great guy, but he's always been a bit reserved when talking about the past. I never pressed him much about it. We had a good life, and I didn't see the need to dredge up painful memories for him. Sarah, on the other hand, was buzzing with excitement about family day. She mentioned she was bringing her mom, which piqued my curiosity since she rarely talked about her family. The day arrived, and the office was buzzing with people, laughter, and the sound of kids running around. I was making my rounds, half-heartedly mingling, when I spotted Sarah with an older woman who bore an uncanny resemblance to her. They were heading my way, and Sarah was waving me over with a smile. Hey, I want you to meet my mom, she beamed, her enthusiasm infectious. As we were introduced, something about her mom's demeanor seemed off. She was polite but had this intense look in her eyes, like she was searching for something in me. The interaction was brief, as they were whisked away by another group of co-workers wanting to introduce their families but that look stayed with me. A few weeks after family day, things started to get weird. Sarah and I were assigned to work on a project together, which meant spending even more time with each other. That's when the deja vu moments began to increase. We'd discover shared childhood experiences that were oddly specific, like a mutual fear of clowns sparked by the same obscure 80s horror movie, or our shared love for a discontinued candy bar that was only sold in a specific region of the country. It was quirky at first, but then it became unsettling. One evening, after working late on our project, Sarah and I were sharing a pizza in the break room, trading stories about our childhoods. That's when the bombshell dropped. Sarah mentioned, in passing, how her mom had always been overprotective since she lost her twin brother at birth. I nearly choked on my pizza. Wait, what did you just say? Yeah, it's a sad story. My mom had twins, a boy and a girl, but the boy didn't make it. She's always been super protective of me because of that, Sarah explained, her tone turning somber. That hit me like a ton of bricks. I had always known I was born prematurely and that my birth had been complicated, but my dad never mentioned anything about a twin. I brushed it off as a coincidence at the moment, but that night, I couldn't shake the feeling that something bigger was at play. The next day, I confronted my dad. It was the most difficult conversation I've ever had. I could see the pain in his eyes as he confirmed my suspicions. Yes, I had a twin sister. Yes, there were complications at birth. But the story I hadn't been told was that my parents' marriage was already on the rocks, and the stress of a high-risk pregnancy and subsequent complications were the last straw. They separated shortly after we were born, each taking one of us and making the heart-wrenching decision to cut ties completely to start anew. My dad thought he was protecting me by keeping the truth hidden, and in his mind, maybe he was. But learning that Sarah, my workplace twin, was actually my biological twin sister, turned my world upside down. So, here we are. Sarah and I are still processing this revelation. We've started to piece together our shared history, navigating the complexities of a relationship that's both brand new and deeply familiar. There's a lot to untangle, not least of which is how our parents will fit into our newly discovered siblinghood. Part 2. After the initial shock wore off, Sarah and I spent countless hours talking, comparing notes on our lives, and marveling at the quirks and coincidences that seemed less like random chance and more like pieces of a puzzle falling into place. It was during one of these long conversations that we made a spontaneous decision to become roommates. 
It seemed like the perfect way to make up for lost time, and honestly, it felt right. Moving in together was a breeze. Our similar habits and preferences made cohabitation seamless, a testament to our shared genetics, perhaps. We quickly became not just siblings, but best friends, sharing everything from mundane daily details to our deepest fears and ambitions. Our apartment became a haven, a place where we could explore our newfound relationship without the outside world's complexities. It was during this period of blissful cohabitation that Sarah met Brian. At first, he seemed like a great guy, charming, attentive, and seemingly smitten with Sarah. I was happy for her, after all the upheaval, she deserved some happiness. But as their relationship progressed, I began to notice changes in Sarah. She became more withdrawn, her vibrant personality dimming. At first, I attributed it to the natural ebb and flow of a new relationship. But as time went on, red flags started to appear. Sarah would flinch at sudden movements, her explanations for bruises and late-night arguments were flimsy at best, and her once-open demeanor towards me had shifted into something more guarded. It didn't take long for me to put two and two together, Brian was abusive. Confronting Sarah about it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. She was defensive at first, insisting that Brian was just going through a tough time and that things would get better. But as her twin, I could see the truth in her eyes. It took time, but she eventually opened up about the extent of Brian's abuse. My blood boiled at the thought of someone harming Sarah, and I knew I couldn't stand by and watch. The standoff with Brian was inevitable. One evening, he showed up at our apartment, drunk and belligerent, demanding to see Sarah. She was terrified, a reaction that only fueled my resolve. I stood between them, making it clear that he was not welcome. Words were exchanged, threats were made, and the situation escalated quickly. It was a tense, ugly confrontation, but in the end, Brian left and Sarah was safe. We filed a restraining order the next day. In the aftermath, Sarah and I grew even closer. The ordeal with Brian was a harrowing experience, but it also reinforced the unbreakable bond we had formed. We supported each other through the healing process, with Sarah attending therapy and me being her unwavering pillar of strength. Our journey as reunited twins has been anything but ordinary. From the euphoria of discovering each other to the trials we've faced, it's been a testament to the resilience of family and the power of unconditional love. Sarah is not just my sister, she's my best friend, my confidant, and my hero. She's shown incredible strength and courage, and I'm proud to stand by her side. As for what the future holds, we're optimistic. We've both learned a lot about ourselves, each other, and the importance of facing life's challenges together. Our story is a reminder that even in the darkest times, there's light to be found in the bonds we share with those we love. Part 3. Several months ago, Sarah and I were involved in a car accident. It was a regular evening. We were driving home from a weekend getaway, laughing and sharing stories when it happened. In an instant, our world was shattered. I survived with minor injuries, but Sarah, Sarah didn't make it. The grief that followed was indescribable. Losing Sarah felt like losing a part of myself. The twin sister I had only recently found and grown to love more deeply than I ever thought possible was gone. The pain was, and still is, overwhelming. For weeks, I was lost in a fog of sorrow, unable to see a way forward. The thought that haunted me the most was the unbearable guilt of having been behind the wheel. It didn't matter that it was an accident, that there was nothing I could have done to prevent it. The weight of it crushed me. Our apartment, once filled with laughter and warmth, became a mausoleum of memories. Everywhere I looked, I saw Sarah, heard her voice, felt her absence. The idea of continuing without her was unthinkable. How do you move on when the person who became your world is suddenly ripped away? It was during one of my darkest moments that I found a letter from Sarah. She had written it shortly after we moved in together, a just-in-case letter, she called it. In it, she spoke of her love and gratitude for the time we had rediscovered each other, for the bond we shared. She also wrote about her hopes for me, should anything ever happen to her. Sarah wanted me to live fully, to embrace life's adventures, and to find happiness again, even in her absence. Reading her words was a turning point. It didn't make the grief any less sharp, but it gave me a direction. Sarah wouldn't have wanted me to drown in my sorrow. She would have wanted me to live, not just for myself, but for her too. So, I made a decision. I sold our apartment, the place that had become a sanctuary for us both but now felt too empty without her. With the proceeds, I bought a van, converted it into a mobile home, and set out to travel the country. It was something Sarah and I had always talked about doing together, exploring the vast, beautiful landscapes of our nation, making memories in every town and city we visited. The journey has been bittersweet. There are moments when the beauty of the world takes my breath away, 
and I wish Sarah were here to see it with me. There are nights when the pain hits all over again, and I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. But then I remember her words, her wish for me to find happiness, to live a life full of adventure and love. As I travel, I carry Sarah with me, not just in my heart, but in the stories I share with the people I meet. I tell them about my incredible twin sister, about our short time together, and how she changed my life. In a way, it keeps her alive, her spirit adventuring alongside me. Reddit, sharing this journey with you has been a source of comfort. Your responses, your empathy, have helped me feel less alone in this. As I continue on this path, I'm learning that grief is not something you overcome but something you carry with you, transformed by love and memories. Sarah's passing taught me the fragility of life and the importance of living fully, loving deeply, and never taking a single moment for granted. I don't know where this journey will take me, but I do know that I'm living the life Sarah wanted for me, a life of discovery, resilience, and hope. Thank you for reading, for your support, and for allowing me to share my heart with you. Until next time, take care of yourselves and hold your loved ones close. Life is an unpredictable journey, but it's the love we share that makes it worth the ride.